Whether you're conducting competitive research for your own business or on behalf of a client, it can be really helpful to have it consolidated in its own database. So in this video, we're going to walk through a competitor's database in Notion, which we're gonna be able to reference across and throughout our projects. We'll walk through filling out a competitor profile template. We'll discuss how to link these profiles to target segments. And finally, we'll discuss how to sort and segments this database of competitors based on the various properties that we've given them. So from the shared project workspace, if you have this view, you can click into the competitors page and this is what we're going to be focused on. So as a first step, we're going to create a new competitor and we're gonna hit this competitors template. So that's going to load up some key information for us to begin from. And in this example case, we're going to be thinking about either a client or if it happens to be your own business that is in some way or another involved in web design or providing web design services. And we're going to create Webflow as an indirect competitor. So the, we know some basic information about this. Um, let's say that the entry price is $24 per month. Let's say that the market share is 1 million and we can pull this from our own research. If we have it, uh, we can discuss the onboarding flow. So Webflow has a free trial offering. The product that they offer is a software. It's a piece of software and it's also um, relevant for this particular um, client or business is the fact that they offer pre-built website templates. Now the segments that Webflow targets out of these particular preloaded ones, we might say tech startups, we might say e-commerce, um, bakers maybe, but perhaps not in this example. The type of competitor, we can choose from direct, indirect or tertiary, and we will list some more information about these, all of these fields um, in the attached article or write-up if you'd like to learn more. And we can leave a link to their website if we want to follow up and remind ourselves of what exactly this competitor is all about. So one great place to fill out many of the, the aspects of this competitor profile will be to actually visit the, the website of this competitor. So if we were to go to Webflow, we could fill out a key value proposition that we pick up from them, what their claimed differentiator happens to be, who are their target customers, who are the target segments, what are the common use cases that they are speaking to, uh, what are the key, any key features, benefits or highlights that they put out there, uh, what are the price points that are relevant, um, what is their onboarding flow. These can be if you, if you have a competitor profile that you want to keep consistent across competitors, then you can change these to be um, whatever is most relevant or whatever happens to repeat in your industry. We can give a little bit of a summary of their design style if we have anything to comment there. We can give some basic background on the company, perhaps something like the location. We can select from some common options that may be here. We could give a year that it was founded. We can give, I think it was actually earlier than that. I'm not sure. And we can give an estimate or if we have a, uh, maybe from Crunchbase or one of these similar tools to learn a bit more about the, the company makeup, we can, we can input it here. If we like, we can list any standout clients that they mention. We can list any active marketing channels that they're using. We can give an audience size estimate, which we will be viewing here from the main table. Uh, we can add any reviews or sentiment from their customers. And we have a bit of a SWOT analysis at the bottom if we want to give us a statement for each of these four areas. So that's a very, very quick and brisk walkthrough of the competitor profile template that has been added. You of course can add or take away anything that makes sense 
for you and how you're using this database, but those, those that covers the basics. In this example, we've linked to a couple of segments. This is a related database, which is a target segments long list. If you'd like to add a new segment, you can do so directly from this page. So if I wanted to add freelancers, perhaps as a new segment that Webflow happens to be targeting, then I can do so directly from within the competitor profile. If I navigate to the target segments long list, it's going to automatically show a new target segment and it will show that Webflow is listed as a competitor. After we've filled out our competitors database a little bit further, this one's looking a little bit slim, but once you have your main competitors, whether they're direct, indirect or tertiary, and you'd like to sort through them a bit more easily or to prioritize particular competitors, perhaps based on their onboarding flow on their the types of different competitors out there. There are some pre built filters into this database. We have a type product matrix in the top. We are grouping based on direct, indirect or tertiary competitors. So you'll see that in this column, we're only talking about direct competitors for this particular business. Since this business is offering web design services, you'll see all of these kind of agencies and um, branding teams here and the indirect and tertiary are kind of not quite uh, competing with us exactly on the services side, but are indirectly or in a related way, kind of appealing to our target segments. And in this row or the, the row distinction or the way that it is grouped by rows is covering the specific use cases that are most relevant to our target segments. So those are the, the products that we're offering or the particular services that we're offering, which in this case are software, website templates, bespoke web design, branding and design assets. So that's one matrix view, which we have. We can also sort our table by type. This is a type of competitor. We can sort by size. We can sort by product. And of course, if you want to create your own filters or sorts that are relevant um, for filtering through this database for yourself, then by all means you can add them uh, with the, the inbuilt Notion functionality. So to recap, if you're already doing some competitor research and you'd like to consolidate it into a database that can be segmented, sorted and linked to other parts of your business or other projects that you're working on, then feel free to use or duplicate this Notion template. Uh, we covered how to fill in a competitor profile template. We discussed how to link this profile to various segments or other parts of your workspace. And finally, we talked about how to sort through a database of competitors based on various profile problems.